What you guys got another rootkit removal video here for you. Now this one is all about sidox.b rootkit. Now rootkits are real nasty bits of work. They actually get on the system and they can lay there undetected and you could be going about your day thinking the system's clean and it's not because you've got a rootkit on there and it's buried deep in the operating system. Okay. And some of them, as I said, change the master boot record. Now obviously there is loads of programs out there that scan for malware, rootkits, trojans and so on. And uh, you must make sure when removing infections from the system that you do full checks on the system, okay, to make sure it's fully cleaned before you start to uh, give it back to either the customer or that you can safely say it's cleaned. You can't just rely on one program, i.e., let's say, running malware bytes and then say, I've run a full scan and it's coming up clean, um, because it doesn't work like that. You need to use different tools for different jobs and use multiple tools just to make sure the system is cleaned okay okay so let's have a look at the uh, program I'm going to be looking at this is called VBA32 anti rootkit it's a lovely little tool uh, to remove rootkits from the system and it's also a great way of detecting now we've got a uh, would you like to run VBA32 anti rootkit on a dedicated desktop with advanced security features I'm going to say yes to this option and uh, once this opens up, you'll uh, see what it opens up. As you can see here, we're on a dedicated desktop. And this will give me the actual benefit of running scans from this uh, environment here. And you can see it's going to run a full scan of all these areas. Now, this is where what rootkits do. They hide and bury themselves deep in the operating system. And uh, this tool is going to root them out and f show them for us. Okay, so as you can see here, we can scan the registry, drivers and services, network, auto runs, processes, and so on and so on. Go right away through the kernel, and uh, boot sectors, and whatnot. It also checks the digital uh, the digital signature of all the files on there. Okay, and tells you whether they're uh, good or bad. And we can also come up here and do singular scans as well. And as you can see here, we've got low-level registry access tool and also low-level disk uh, access tool. Now, this one is great if you want to do some checks on the disk itself, i.e. if you've got rootkits and stuff. We've also got a process manager, which I thought was a nice little feature as well. It takes a bit of time to open. Just load it up. And it will give you a full-blown uh, tool to actually have a look at the processes on that system. Now I know everyone's going to say sys internals and stuff like that. There's loads of different tools out there. Uh, we're talking about rootkits here as well. And this is an awesome bit of kit as well, this tool. And you can see what everything's running on there, okay? It also gives you loads of other functionality like modules, handles and so on, okay? When you click on these you can see all this sort of stuff, okay? Now, okay, so let's get rid of this uh, window down for a second. And we're going to go up to Tools, and then we're going to click on uh, Low Level Disk Access Tool. And we're going to go OK here. And as you can see here, I'm going to highlight the hidden. And you can come down on this tree here and you can see the C drive because I'm on a virtual box here. And we've got another volume here that we can actually look at, okay? Gives us some real in-depth information on the system. And you can also run scans here. You've got the boot here as well. Opens it right up and shows you everything. And uh, what we're going to do here is look at the volumes. And you can see that it's got a non-standard VBR there. And uh, what you can do is right click on this now if you wish and restore to a standard VBR or restore standard VBR and force a reboot. This is going to try to write it back to a normal um, way it should be. Okay. Now we also can have a look at the scanner here, which we can run a scan from here as well to check. So it has got lots of uh, functionality and tools to it. Okay. So I'm going to close this off. I'm not going to do anything with that tool because I want to do a whole video on that tool and really get some uh, different rootkits on the system and show it in action. We're going to be looking at TDSS Killer as well, which is another useful tool. And this is probably the most more common or popular tool that people use. Okay, So I'm going to run this and you can see it does deal with SIDOX as well. 
Now you want to look at this area here because this is the area that tells you what this tool can actually deal with. And there's a little change uh, parameters here which a lot of people miss as well. So we can change this and uh, we we'll put some ticks in here. And you can say uh, it wants to reboot now but I'm not going to bother doing that. So I'm going to click OK here and run a scan. Okay, so there you see it's actually found the actual rootkit on the system, and you can see it's found it there. And you've got a little drop down menu here. Now, the thing to remember here is if this says delete in this window here for some unknown reason and it says delete, you do not want to delete it, okay, because you're going to end up with a non booting machine. I see a lot of people make mistakes like that. So you always want to use cure in this in this circumstance okay and cure is going to try to cure the um, partition there okay and fix it and you've got restore and you've also got quarantine and skip now if it just only gives you an option to delete the best thing to do at that time is to skip it okay and miss it you do not want to delete okay I can't emphasize that so we'll do a cure here and we're going to do a continue it now wants to reboot the system, so I'm going to reboot. Just let this load up. Okay, now it wants to run this. So what we need to do here is click on run. It's then going to do its thing. Okay. So now if we run a scan now, it should be gone and it should be free from the system. As you can see. Now let's take a quick look at the actual VBA32. Okay, so I'm going to go straight up to our low level disk tool here. I'm going to click OK here. Go to volume and you can see now that the actual hard disk volume 1 has been put back and changed. Okay, so now the infection is now gone. So you could have done it with either one of these tools. I want I didn't want to do, do this uh, with the VBA32 anti-rootkit tool uh, because I want to make a full video because I think it deserves its own video in its own right because it's that good. So what we're going to do here is now we can see this is all green and it's all good. We can now come out of here. So you could use this as a visual aid or also a, or detection mode and use it to remove it or you can use other methods to remove it. So all in all, this is going to be great to have on your USB stick pen and uh, have in your arsenal to remove malware rootkits and stuff like that from the system. So let's close that off. And I'm going to show you how you can protect yourself against getting these types of infections on the system. This is just one way or one method of doing that. Now, you've heard me talking about Malwarebytes and Malwarebytes Pro. Now, Malwarebytes Pro is different to Malwarebytes itself because Malwarebytes Pro is going to run in the background and protect you, okay? Now, they work very hard at updating their database and keeping you safe. Now, as you can see here, I've got Malwarebytes Pro running in the background. So if I click on this, I'm hoping that Malwarebytes Pro is going to stop this from installing. Okay. Now I know this is going to be picked up by Malwarebytes because if I right click and scan the file with Malwarebytes, it will detect it. And uh, if I show you the results, you can see it saying backdoor SIDOX. Okay, now what you've got to remember is they might not always detect it, but it's best to have something like this on the system that's going to protect you and stop you getting infected with these types of files. Now, I don't work for Malwarebytes, I don't think I work there and I'm trying to get you to buy it and I'm going to get permission. I don't. 
okay I just know it's a great product so what I want to do here is try to install this and as you can see Malwarebytes Pro has quarantined that file straight away now this won't happen on the free version so don't think the free version is going to do that it's only the pro version that's going to do that and for the amount of money they're charging it's peace of mind okay it does protect you for a lot of stuff ransomwares and these rogues and stuff like that that's how good it is I believe in it that much so anyway I think that's going to be about it for this video that's how you can protect yourself and how you can remove it from the system and uh, in the future we're going to be doing a much bigger video on VBA32 anti-rootkit software okay so thanks again for watching guys and thanks for your support don't forget my name is Brian from Bright Tech Computers and I'll be making more videos again in the future now if you've got any video requests send me a message and I'll do my best to make those videos for you have a great weekend guys and I'll uh, see you real soon bye for now